Okay, good evening and welcome to TH004 uh, Christology, and we're on to session number eight. And so let's go ahead and just begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and we just want to declare that you are the king of the universe, you're our creator, you're the creator of all things. And Father God, through your son, through the son's powerful word, he upholds all things, he maintains your providence is in and around all events in the course of history. Father God, we, we declare that, that your will is sovereign and we submit to it. Father, I just ask right now that you would be with the Filipino people, with the Philippines. We don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes. Um, we do know that we're, we're called to participate in our civic duty and we're called upon to be a light in, in a dark place. Father God, I pray that your peace would fill all the Filipino hearts, I pray that your gospel would reveal you to them. I also pray for stability and, and health and growth of the nation. We do pray for the, the new um, president and vice president-elect, um, President um, Marcos, and also President uh, Duterte, Sarah Duterte, Father. I pray that you would, you would work in their hearts, that you would guide them. May they do what's right in your eyes and not what's, what's politically best or what is um, for their personal gain, Father God, but we pray in the name of Jesus that they would act in, in accordance with your will and that your spirit would lead and guide them. Father, we also pray for this time. I just ask that you would strengthen us as we are studying your word and we're on to looking at the, the coming of your word in time and space, taking on flesh, dwelling among us, Father. I pray that we would rest in the truth that your presence is forevermore with us in Christ, we are his body and he is our head and also his spirit dwells within us. Father, I pray that we would just meditate upon these truths. Father God, may, may, may your spirit fill us, whether we're in the Philippines in Tacloban, Samar, Cebu, or Manila, uh, Metro Manila. Father, I pray that you would bind us together through the spirit and also strengthen us to do your will. Father God, may we rest in the, in the truth that your son has come, your word, your word has come and revealed you to us. Uh, we ask a blessing now upon this time. In, in Jesus' name, our mediator, our Lord and Savior, we pray these things. Amen. Okay, let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and screen share. As I said before the prayer, welcome to Christology, Prophet, Priest, and King. This course is being offered in, um, in Light of the Cloud Seminary. And so tonight, we're, we're, we're going to be looking at uh, session eight, John 1, 14 to 18, Christ, the living word. And so um, overview of the session. So what we'll be looking at doing tonight, uh, number one, we're going to briefly review the outline as we have every week, just really calling our attention to the big picture of the fundamental understanding of Christology, those, those fundamental passages. We're also going to briefly review the, the big ideas from, uh, from Isaiah 52, 13 to 53, 12. And I hope to post that video today, tomorrow, so we should be caught up there. We're going to read in Historical Theology, Westminster Confession of Faith 8.3. We're also going to look at breakout session number eight. So after this PowerPoint, you'll go into a breakout session to, to discuss John 1, 14 to 18. It's, it's going to be good. You should really enjoy it. And then we're going to analyze John 1, 14 to 18. And so just to, just to review with you, the memory verse, Hebrews 1, 1 to 4 says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature, the glory of God, the imprint of his nature, very close to what we'll be discussing tonight. The same, I mean, essentially the same, the same content, just packaged in a slightly different way. He upholds the universe by the word of his power after making purification for sins, after making a, a vicarious atonement for our sins, both concerning the guilt and also positive righteousness. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. And so just re really quickly going through the outline, we looked at Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. It's the final word, the summary of the person work of Jesus Christ. Uh, number two, the eternal word and the creation of the world. And so looking at Christ's involvement in 
the creation and actually main, maintenance of the world. Incredibly powerful. And then we looked at him as the final Adam, our, our federal head, our representative. In Adam, we, we, Adam's guilt was imputed to us. In Christ, if we are in union with Christ, Christ's righteousness is imputed to us. And so we have a right standing in God's judgment. We have peace with God and we have and will have life forevermore. Uh, number four, Christ, the heir of Abraham, the, the promise of inheriting all things is given and fulfilled in Christ and then given to us by faith. Number five, Christ as the greater Moses. And so we looked here at, at how Jesus Christ is the goat mediator. Jesus Christ is the goat mediator. And so just an, an incredibly powerful word of encouragement there. And then number six, Christ, the son of David, Christ, the son of David. And so um, looking at Christ as both the king of the Davidic, of the Davidic kingdom and looking at Christ as both the king of the Davidic, of the Davidic kingdom and the, 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 the king of God's eternal kingdom. And so incredibly powerful truths that Christ fulfills. And then we finished last week, Christ, the servant of the Lord. And we really looked closely into his vicarious atonement and intercession for his chosen um, offspring. And now we're into number eight, Christ, the living word, Christ, the living word. And so we'll be looking at John 1, 14 to 18. Just a, a brief review from the big idea from Isaiah. And so the big idea is that Jesus Christ's most fundamental work as the servant of the Lord was to make a vicarious substitutionary atonement for his people, which included bearing the guilt of their sins on the cross, receiving God's wrath as punishment, making them righteous through his perfect obedience. And this also included the closely connected work of interceding to the Father on their behalf and actually receiving the fruit of his labor. So just, just phenomenal truths. Isaiah 52, 13 to 53, 12, the most important passage in, in, in the Old Testament and top five of all time in all of scripture. Just so important. We, we have to know that like the back of our hand, just what, what's being taught there. Um, I do just want to declare um, from historical theology to, to show that we're in line with historical theology and, and, and we should accept this Westminster Confession of Faith. 8.3, Westminster Confession of Faith, 8.3 of Christ the Mediator. The Lord Jesus in his human nature, thus united to the divine, was sanctified and anointed with the Holy Spirit above measure, having in him all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in whom it was pleased the Father that the Father, it, it pleased the Father that all fullness should dwell to the end that being harm, holy and harmless, undefiled, full of grace and truth, he might be thoroughly furnished to execute the office of mediator and surety, which office he took not unto himself, but was thereunto called by his father, who put all power and judgment into his hand and gave commandment to execute the same. And so we want to focus this idea of full full of grace and truth. The spirit is given above measure. So these are all truths that are, that are, that are focused upon in John 1, 14 to 18. Now in the Westminster Confession, they use other passages as well, but what you're just seeing how the Westminster Confession of Faith is just saturated with what the word is saying. And so especially in this area, it's, it's accurate. Big ideas, big ideas. So the big ideas for tonight, we have three big ideas here. Number one, the eternal word has become a man in order to, in order to bring God's presence to us fully, revealing God the Father to us, his person and will. This includes his glory, both in his acts, words, and power, which is visible. Let me just change this here, which are visible. My English is terrible. So the eternal word has become a man in order to bring God's presence to us fully. And in that act, parallel in that act, he's revealing God the Father to us, both his person and his will. It's not just who God is as a person, but it's also the will that he wants us to do. 
This includes the glory of God visible. And of course, those specific things, the glory is not just the incredible radiance, but also in acts and words. Okay, so incredibly phenomenal truth for us to contemplate. The sun is far greater than Moses. And so again, here we see just the absolute supremacy of the sun as a mediator. We see mediation here as well. So there's just so many, I think from the Western circuit, there's also mediation going on here. Um, so, and we talked about mediation in 8.3. And then the last point I do want to highlight here is this is, con this is concerning probably uh, theology, or we could say content. This is relationship to past revelation and mediation. Watch this. So that's, that's going on here. This is going on here. And then down here, this is reliability of message. Or revelation. So maybe not so much in Tak Loban, for sure in Manila. So maybe Pastor Cloyd and, and Daniel, Jesus, maybe in Cebu. There's the push now in the US, especially with, with progressive evangelicals, is just to deny the reliability of the original message and to say, oh, okay, so parts of the parts of the scripture are real, other parts are not. Or we can trust only part of who Jesus is, not everything. Um, or who really knows? You know, like th there's, a, there's a famous um, 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 theologian that's now on his own, uh, Peter Enns, and he's against, he, he does not like talking about the reliability and actually knowing. And he'll, he'll, actually, he'll actually condemn people who, who stress reliability of the message, certainty. He, he, he hates, I shouldn't say hate, although functionally he probably does, but he strongly dislikes and despises from his podcast, from his books. He despises certainty and reliability. And we're going to see here tonight, so maybe in Takloban, this is not as much of an issue, but in Manila for sure, if not now, it, it's coming. It's coming, to, it's coming to a church near you. Uh, um, the reliability of the message. And the whole one of the one of the a huge point in John's gospel, and we see it play out here, is the absolute reliability of what's being told. Jesus' disciples, John, the final OT prophet, and the law testify and confirm the Son to us. And the Son reveals and confirms God's person and message to all of us. That is so fundamental. The number one way that the, that, that the devil, that Satan attacks Christianity, there's a lot of different ways, but the most fundamental way, it's from the garden. He attacks the reliability of the word of God. Number one, you can take it to the bank. He has been corrupting the word of God from the beginning, and he does it until the end. And here we have... Jesus' disciples, we're going to see the law, the courtroom setting, testifying. John is testifying. The law is testifying to who the word is, and the word testifies and reveals the Father to us. No one has ever seen him. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm giving you the sneak peek. No one has ever seen him. The only son at the Father's side the, the father's bosom as close to the father as possible. He has revealed him full stop. Okay. So you know, the direction we're going. John 1, 14 to 18. Hear now the word of the Lord and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory glory as of the only son from the father full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and he cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. 
For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. You know the direction we're going. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do a breakout session right now. And then we're going to get into the text. So let me. Okay, so what we'll do is let's, yeah, let's, let's ask, we can, we can just talk through these questions very briefly before we get into the, the discussion for tonight. I, I really hope, I truly hope and pray that, um, that this, the, the, the breakout group was beneficial. Okay, so I'll just ask the questions anyone can answer. If you want to have one person, that's fine as well. So let's just go ahead and let us ask the question. So first question, first question here, uh, list all the descriptive titles and names for the word. List all the descriptive titles and names of the word. So what do you have for me here? Let me try to do something. Let me see if I can get the text. Very nice. Okay, here we go. So we got the whole text. We got almost, we got the whole text up here on the left. Okay, great. Ah, this is good. All right. So question number one, the, 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 the number one question we want to ask, the, t- the descriptive titles and names for the word, what are they? So if someone want, wants to give me the descriptive words in this context, what do we have? The only son. Excellent. So number one, the only son, what else? What else do we have? God in humanity. Okay. Yeah. So we can, yeah. So let's, let's do this. So this is, let's do um, first we could, we could say God, right? It's describing if you're using ESV, there is a textual variant here. It's debated. This that's beyond the scope of the class, but we'll just go with the reliability. It's reliable. So we have number one, the only son, number two, God, number three, uh, Henry also said human, right? Full of grace and truth. Let's make two categories here, just so that we're clear between titles and um, descriptions. Okay, so we can do here, he's full of grace and truth. Excellent. What else? What at other? The father, at the father's side. Okay, yeah. So he's excellent. What else do we have? He was before John. Okay, so so existed before John. Let's just also add here. So the title is also right. He's called the Word right here. So this context, he's also called the Word. So just just to be clear here. So we have at least at least four different identities. He's God. He's man. So we could put here. He's man. He's the Word. He's the only son. What else? The visible God. Oh, no, really good. So he is, um, so he is visible, God visible. Excellent. What else? There's some more titles here. There's support, some more names. Think about names going on here. I see at least two more names. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. What, so explicit, Henry, that's an inference. Where is, where, what's the description of Emmanuel here? I want the word. Dwell among us. Well, yes, there it is. There it is. Dwell among us. Dwelling among, dwelling among us. Good. So Emmanuel literally means God with us. So this is just another way of saying that. But it's picking up on a slightly different theme, although it's the same thing, a slightly different idea. The same over idea of presence, but a different image. We're going to look at that. What what other titles of of the word are present here? Come on. He, he has made him known. He has okay, made so God known. okay, so let's do here. Revealed God, revealed the Father. Revealed the Father. Now I think you're already into actions. <laughs> so this is a. Uh, let's make a clarification here. So this is actions. So let's be clear here. So number one, uh, let's let's bring this over here. These are these are actions here. 
He is the priest. What specifically draws your attention to that, Henry, in the context? The priest, because he, he is the emissary, emissary or yeah, emissary of, from God the Father to human. Okay, so yeah, so let's so the accent here is not on us to God, but God to us. So you're so close. The 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 the, the priestly part of God to man, right? A, a a priest from Hebrews three. I know I I know, I'll, I'll right. Apostle is from God to man. Priest is man to God. Viva. So you want to say apostle, mm -hmm. apostle. So let's do this here. So apostle, this is the apostle, God to man. So this is the, we can say here, sent one. He is the sent one from the father. That's there. Okay. Um, so he, so number two, uh, they, uh, Danny brought up revealed, revealed the father to us. All right, so the action is grace and truth comes through him. What's another title for him? Come on, I, there's two more There's two more names of him in this context. Uh, Pastor Tim, uh, descript description is uh, also um, superior than John. Oh, no, that's because good. Wow, Trump yeah, superior to John. Yeah, superior... Yeah. Superior to John, yeah. So actually, um, Henry, this here, uh, mediation <laughs> through him, mediation. Yeah. So this is so this is the priest aspect that Henry was looking for, priest apostle. Yeah. So think of this. We're gonna we're gonna unpack this through him. This is a. This is agency, agent. He is the agent, the means, okay? So, right, because you have the, the flip side is Moses, right? Moses mediated the, the law. So, um, Henry, I apologize. You are correct. It's there. <laughs> we just had to find it. <laughs> so, the mediation. So, when it refers to grace and truth coming through him, that's mediation. Here also is the king. He is the king of verse 18. Who is the right? Uh, who is at the father's? Yeah. So, so, th th I mean, that's that's the that's the God. The, the king. The king part is in the uh, the Christ, right? Messiah, King. At the father's Mr. side. Him, savior. At, okay. Where's the savior part? We all have all received grace upon grace. So that would accent, that would accent, I think still it's the, because grace and, and truth came through him. I, I think that's still, that's more the, that's the, the agent, or we could say mediation, mediator. The savior is, is in his name, Jesus, right? He shall save his people from their sins, right? Yeshua. So you're right, Kia, and it's right here. In the name Jesus. So we have only son, God, man, the word. Let's do this clear. Word of God. Christ, Messiah, Savior, through Jesus, the name Jesus. Anything else we have? I, th I think we've exhausted. There's one more. There's one more uh, description here. What about glory? His glory. Can we include that? Come on. Okay, great. I think this is really good. Okay, so let's look at the action. So he, so the number one action is he dwells among us. Number two, he reveals the Father. Grace and truth comes through him. Any other actions that he does? So revealed the Father is verse 18. Dwelling among us is verse 14. Grace and truth comes through him is verse 17. I, I guess we could also say he's the coming one. He, he who comes, he's coming. And that's actually a theme, the coming of the Lord, right? So we could also describe him as the, the, the coming one, the one who comes. Anyone else want to add, or is this pretty good where we're at? He is more than okay. He is the prophet of prophet. John was the greatest prophet. Of Jesus the Old Testament, is, yeah, yeah. 
of in John was the greatest prophet of the New Testament. No, oh, I'm, I'm saying of the uh, the last of the Old Testament prophets. He was the one. He was the the last. He was like a. <laughs> although there's debate because it's in our testament, but the last prophet. In, yeah, the last the Old Testament. Testament. Of the, old, of the Old Testament, the last prophet of the Old Testament system, if we can, if we can, if we can, um, the covenant, the Old Testament or the Old Covenant. OK. Awesome. OK, great. OK, so. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bring back up the um, our points here so you can see all the different relationships. I, I still need to improve this this list of relationships. We're getting it. We're getting there. Um, but these are the these these are the, the main relationships here. Okay, so looking at let's begin in verse 14. Okay. So what we have here in verse 14 is we have this, this state. Okay. And so in the previous context, right, we looked at the how the word, the word created the world. Okay. And and clearly in the preceding context, we have the word. Is God the second person of the Trinity? Right. We, we we've already established that from our study in our we've already studied we've already established that from our study in John one one to five. Okay, and so that's second person of Trinity. We talked about how He is the the life giver, light, and this is spiritual light. Right. He's the true light. He's the life giver, sustainer. So when we look at 14 to 18, we cannot ignore these fundamental truths, okay? And then we have new. We have a new truth that's going on here. The word not only is the second person, the eternal God, the eternal son, not only is he the one that gives life and sustains life, not only is he the one that gives spiritual light, and, and, and enlightens all of us, right? This is the phenomenal truth. So all of the, the first part is he's above. He's above, right? He's over us. And then look at, the, look at this here. The word became flesh. And so this is describing the word becoming a man. So incredibly powerful. We have several passages to consider. We have Matthew 1, 18 to 25. We have Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. This is, this is real, a, a real person. So this is, he is both God and man, 100% of each. It is so interesting how in other places, right, it'll talk about in, in Galatians 4, Galatians 4 and Romans 2, God sent his son, right? It's, it says that. But notice here that the accent is on the word. The word became flesh. Let's think about that for a second. And what is the significance? What is being accented when it's describing the word becoming flesh versus the son becoming flesh or, or something else? What's the, what's the significance here? Let's think about this for a second. Maybe someone can comment. What's the significance of the word becoming flesh? It's like that the God became flesh. Okay, so we could say number one. God became flesh. That's good. What does the word symbolize? Looking at the Old Testament, looking at the idea of the word, what we've taught, we've taught before about what the word symbolizes. So, so you're saying the word of God. So we could the, say God's power. Go ahead. Go ahead, um, um, Henry. The uncreated being the eternal being became flesh yeah so if so if the eternal becomes flesh looking at maybe suf suffering servant type 
what's the, what's that other word that we use? If 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 God, if if you are becoming, if you are becoming an ant, if you are becoming a, if you're becoming a servant, what what is that? How can we? What do we describe that as? Are you going living up or sacrifice. down? Yeah, living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's. So there is this idea of. We, we, we can refer to his earthly ministry as, as a humiliation. Or we can speak of humility. And we're going to see this later in Ephesians 2, this idea of what Henry was saying, the eternal God becoming flesh. You, we can never see, God can never reveal to us his nature, his characteristic of humility, except through the Son. Does everyone understand that? You will never see God's eternal humility except through the incarnation. How many times have we had the question, why would God permit sin in the world? Well, one thing, without sin, we will never see his humble example. We will never see his humble character that he's called us to, to emulate. So we can think of this in the incarnation, the humility of God. What else? There's so much here, okay? Picking up on God's word, thinking about this here, right? God's word in the Old Testament, this can also be referred to as scripture, correct? And in scripture, the written word, right? This is written. In the Old Testament, in, in, the, in the, the, the Pentateuch, the law, Diba, God revealed who he is. I am the Lord, the one who saved you, and here are my commands. So in, so in the Old Testament scripture, we can think about God's, God reveals his person, who he is, the Lord, and his will. But again, up until now, this is being mediated through Moses, right? <laughs> it's deficient. It's deficient from the standpoint of, of the fallenness of man who's doing the mediation, okay? It's not deficient in God's purpose. It's not deficient in what God has revealed to us. It's deficient in that it's being mediated by a, a sinful man. Everyone tracking there with me? But there is in the Old Testament, God reveals his person and will. Next level. <laughs> Next level. Level up, right? Now, God, God is now coming down and it's fundamentally person and will law what god wants us to do what what god wills of us that's why jesus is always saying i've come to do my father's will <laughs> nothing more nothing less i have come to reveal the father to you all throughout the gospels so this is like next level it is so true that, this, that as the son, he reveals God. 100%. That's a different imagery. But here now, I guess what I'm trying to get at is next level scripture. Let me just write this down. Next, next level scripture. If you can imagine that, right? They have the written Torah, and it's like next level. And we're going to continue to see this relationship. Um, Paul has a question. Go ahead, Paul. Sir, I, um, I observe also. Uh, aside from humiliation or humility, as the world became flesh, I see. I saw also. I observed that it has a great grace. The because grace? the world grace? became flesh. Great grace. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yes, Paul. Excellent. I'm gonna change that word to incredible. Incredible grace. Unmerited favor. God sending his son to live with us. We don't deserve it. No one deserves it. Unmerited favor is going on right here, okay? Excellent. So we have here, we can first describe this as a, uh, this is a, a state of what's happening. The word became flesh. We can refer to this as the incarnation. Or, or we could say, we could say, we could, 
we'll keep state, but as long as we understand that this is the birth. And so we can also think of this as an action because it's referring to the birth. And then, and then we, and then look at this here. He dwelt among us. Now, those of you who have studied this passage before, what is the significance of this word dwell? What's the Old Testament significance of this word? Anyone dwell, dwelling among us? Tabernacle. Ah, tabernacle, same word. Tabernacle. So you could say, and he tabernacled among us. So we're going to take a step back here. We're going to look really briefly at biblical theology. Big picture, okay? We have the garden. In the garden, God dwells with man. Diba? He walks with man. Man sins. Man is cast out from his presence. And we have God coming in the presence of Abraham, Jacob, but his presence, his presence is not yet made known, right? In a, in, a, in a more permanent way. The next, he just comes and goes. He comes and goes. Um, the burning bush. And then after he rescues them from, from Egypt, you have the presence of God among the people in the tabernacle. Literally. And we're talking biblical theology right now, okay? Everyone's tracking there with me? This is, this is biblical theology, okay? And then the tabernacle is replaced with the temple, God's dwelling place. Now look at this here. And this climaxes in Jesus Christ. So we... So we and the connection is, is here. <laughs> this is the connection. Does everyone see that? And so we can, we can clearly see that the tabernacle was the next, was the next, was the temple was the next step here. And, but we can look at the tabernacle, the tabernacle points to Christ. And so if it's pointing to Christ, it's also pointing to the temple. Okay. Is everyone tracking there? Everyone, everyone's with me there. So big idea is the idea that God is making himself a place to be with us. That's the whole point of the temple. That's the whole point of the tabernacle. Okay. And so when people will talk, so then let's get, let's get really big. Let's get, let's get really big eschatological. People will say that the temple is coming back. Whether or not the Jews build the temple is a totally different thing. Do you see how it would be so offensive to God for God to ordain? Okay, I'm, I'm tabernacling now with you in my son, right? And so here we can think of the, the church. The head is Jesus. The body is, is Christ. I mean, the body is the church. The head is Jesus. And the, and the connection here is through the spirit. So I hope you're seeing, this is big picture type stuff going on right here, okay? So do you see how, if, if regardless whether or not the Jews somehow swing it and, and they build a temple in, in Jerusalem, okay? Do you see how that's so offensive? And it just, what? Jesus is, Jesus is here. He's the, he's the temple. He's the tabernacle. He, he, he did the sacrifice once for all. He's the high priest, the one interceding for us. The, the church is his body. So this, I hope this brings on a whole new meaning to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 18 to 20. I would go back. We have a video on Ephesians 2, 18 to 22 in our Interpreting Ephesians series. I would go back and watch that again. And this is just, it should bring whole new meaning. The fact that Jesus is our tabernacle He's tabernacling among us. It's, it's offensive to think about, oh, we're just going to bring back the temple. The physical temple was so deficient compared to what we have now in Christ. So deficient. Something to think about. Something to think about. Big idea, though, for us is that 
Christ is dwelling. God is dwelling among his people. Christology, fundamental. Okay. Now look at this. And if you're going to say, Tim, ah, this, that you're going to, this is kind of, this is kind of ice. Maybe this could be ice to Jesus, Tim, because you know, that, that one word dwell one word. Um, I don't see the strength. You ready to go next level, next level here. Come on. We have seen <laughs> his glory. Where did the glory dwell? <laughs> In the OT, at the dedication of the temple, what happens? <laughs> the glory comes down and fills the room. <laughs> In the tabernacle, right? When the tabernacle is set up, the glory of God comes down. Let's, let's look at a parallel passage here. Let's go here. Was it Jesus himself in the tabernacle in the Old Testament? There could be debate. There could, there could be debate on that. But what we can be sure of here is if we go to John, if we go to John chapter 1241. So let's go. If you can look over to your left, John 1241. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. So if, if we're looking at the broader context here, therefore they could not believe, again, for Isaiah said, he has blinded their eyes and has hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. So this is a reference to Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6 and the commissioning of, I, of Isaiah, okay? But Isaiah sees the, the Lord high and lifted up, right? His train filling the temple, right? And then Isaiah says... <laughs> He saw his glory. He saw the his is not God the Father. The his is Jesus Christ the Son. So from this, if we accept, if we accept this paradigm here, Isaiah 6 is referring to the temple and Jesus' glory is there. Okay? then I think your question, we can answer that and say, yes, when the glory filled the tabernacle, we could see that as being the son's glory. And the, But this is not a son's glory against the father's glory. It's that both, the, it's one God, three persons. Okay, is everyone tracking there with me? So it's not an, a, 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 a dichotomy. It is the accent, the presence of Jesus, the son, in the glory. Okay. Is everyone tracking there with me? It's accenting the, 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 the son's glory in the old Testament as well. Okay. That, that the word we is the nation of Israel or the apostles. Yes. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. So, um, <laughs> great question. This is the, this is the apostles. Let put, Let's come back to that. Great question. The, the, the we is, is the apostles because it's it fundamentally it includes John, John the apostle. Yeah, so here, so here in Exodus 24, before the building of the tabernacle, the glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai. So whenever you saw the glory of the Lord, the cloud, that was the presence of God. Okay? So, you, so if, we're, if we're acknowledging the presence of tabernacle, and then, and then they say, we have seen his glory. This is Old Testament reference to presence of God. So it's not just the tabernacle imagery. These two are, are, are inseparably linked like a chain. Okay, let's find another example here. Let me get an example where the, the, the glory, here we go. Here we go. Exodus 40, 34. This is a good one here. Let's look at this right here. Exodus, Exodus 40, 34. Then the cloud covered the tent of the meeting. <laughs> and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. <laughs> so look, glory and tabernacle. 
okay? <laughs> the two are connected. Come on. They could build the tabernacle, but it wasn't until God's presence came that there was, it was any value to them. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of the meeting because the cloud settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So this is Exodus 40, 34 to 35. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. The Lord himself now dwelling with us. But Diba, the glory cloud can come and go. <laughs> My goodness. Jesus is forever the God man. He is forever inseparably linked to us. So Tim, is it related to the presence of God? Yeah, it is the presence of God. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. The presence of God. To see the glory is to see God himself. When you saw the cloud, they knew God was there. On the mountain, in the tabernacle, in the temple. It's so sad in Ezekiel, the vision is the glory of, the, of God leaving the temple. And that is a terrifying thing when, 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 that, when that glory leaves. But thankfully, Christ has come to dwell among men. And so this is, this is the clarity here. This is the clarity, okay? What kind of glory is it? What kind? We're looking at kind. Quality. The only son from the father. And we've already established these two. And, and what is this? This glory, you know, there is such an emphasis today on feeling. And we should feel the presence of God. I'm not minimizing that. But look at, look at the focus here. Full of grace and truth. Unmerited favor and eternal truth. So unbelievably powerful. Think about the assurance, the revelation. Now, people will talk about love, and there is love is present in the Trinity. It's it's fundamental characteristic. I'm not minimizing that. I'm not minimizing that. But here he doesn't say full of love. It's not an either or. And of course, within grace, there is this idea of love. So I'm not minimizing. But at the end of the day, the emphasis here is the fullness of Christ. He's full of grace and he's full of truth. And so if someone is trying to, re you cannot re reject, these two are inseparably linked. So people will talk about just having, just having love, just acceptance. Grace and truth are inseparable. And that's who Jesus is full of. My goodness. So here, what we're looking at right now is this right now, we are in the realm of, we are in the realm of fulfillment. Old Testament promise, New Testament fulfillment. Now look at this. We can say all this, but we want to know, is it reliable? Is the message reliable? Look here now. This here, who is the we? The Greek word here is so powerful. I would write this down. The best translation is like this. We ourselves, the verb is like reflexive. The focus is upon our action. We ourselves saw. This is eyewitness testimony. This is, this is Kuya Bull Boy territory here. We ourselves saw his glory. My goodness. So when we talk about glory, Let's, let's define glory here, okay, before we come back there, okay? So if we're, if, we're de, if we're defining glory here, this includes, like we said, grace and truth. This also includes sign miracles. This also includes visible eternal glory of the exalted risen Christ. So here, let's look at, so we did a search on glory. Okay, so let's look at John's gospel. So I'm gonna, I did a word search. So I'm coming down here. Let's get down to, let's get down to, to John, to John's gospel. So, so the way that we would find out how he's, we can, 
overall summarize it as grace and truth. But what to what extent have they seen the glory of God? Let's look at the, the ways that they've seen the glory of God. Look at John, look at John 2:11. The first of these signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. So this is the miracle, right? The miracle of the water turned to wine. And he revealed his glory and the disciples believed in him. So the sign miracles revealed. So that's supernatural power coming down here. The one who speaks of his own authority seeks his own glory, but one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true. And there is no falsehood in him. So look at this here. Part of the glory of Jesus Christ is what he said here, the, the truth component. So someone, you can be sure someone is not doing the will of God or not, not right. The command is to do all to the glory of God, right? Do all to the glory of God. So you can take it to the bank. Someone who is lying ends justify the means type behavior or not being truthful, manipulating, being dishonest, a hundred percent. They're not revealing the glory of God. God's glory is not being revealed, especially Christian leaders, right? And so the, 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 the ultimate is in Christ. God's glory is revealed in the complete absence of, of falsehood, only truth coming along here. If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me. <laughs> So our glory only comes from God and the ultimate is Christ. So anyone who tries to get glory for himself, my goodness, you are already outside the realm of Christianity, right? That's why the one who exalts himself will be brought low. The one who humbles himself, God will exalt. So there's practical. This is true for us as well. We need to humble ourselves in the presence of God so that he will exalt us. If we exalt ourselves, we try to grab the positions, we will be Humbled. Can we connect this on Revelation? Yeah. That 40 is the lamb. Yes. It's not say it's not say 40 is the lamb and me. <laughs> it's the lamb alone. No, that's excellent. So here's the thing though. The glory is also in the sacrifice. This is what I'm trying to get at. The humility also brings glory to Christ, right? Uh, we talked about this last week when, when he is lifted up, the whole world will be drawn to him in his sacrifice. But, but if, if ever there was just, okay, this is just physical glory of, of serving others. This is just physical glory and signs. There is raw power, raw, visible glory coming from him. Isaiah said this, these things because he saw his glory Look at the vision of, let's, let's go to the vision of Isaiah so that you can understand the power of, of Christ's glory, unadulterated power. Look at this here. Isaiah 6. Listen to the word of the Lord. In the year that the King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Glory. And John's response is, Woe to me. I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people with unclean lips. But for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And this glory here refers to Jesus Christ. Unfiltered, the sun, raw, incredible glory. The sun doesn't even compare. One other passage here, what they eyewitness, right? So it's not, again, just physical glory of what he's done. Christ's glory in the prophetic word. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths, 2 Peter 1.16. Write it down. Let's write it down. 2 Peter 1.16-21. For we did not 
we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you, made known, revealed the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This transfiguration was a foretaste of the power and the glory of Christ. The power and the coming of the Lord when we were eyewitnesses. This is law, courtroom, assurance, reliability. When, we, when he received glory and honor from God the Father. My goodness. So, this, so, so Jesus' miracles revealed him. This grace and truth in his compassion and teaching ministry. In the sacrifice. And in, we, it wasn't just those. We saw his raw, unfiltered power and glory on the mountain. Incredible. Let's reflect upon this. Fo follow up question or, 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 or comment. Let's, let's, take a, like, let's take a pause. Sir, uh, question, sir. I'm, uh, right now, I am a little bit struggle that uh, sentence in the Bible that uh, we have seen the glory as the sun the father what can you give uh like what 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 kind of i know what kind of glory as the sun as aside of, of, of truth yeah. yeah no okay so 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 this is the thing okay no in the old testament everyone saw and knew the glory of almighty god the father the lord okay this, this was not questioned, okay? This was not questioned. This is, this is that's, that's, that's good. But we haven't seen the Father, okay? So the accent here is that we've seen the Son. And, and the, the language is very specific, the only Son. And so what's being accented here, Paul, is that if you've seen the son, you've seen the father, the, the, the father son relationship, you know, this, right. There is no difference. And so I, I'm not, I, I don't want to enter into, I don't want to enter into political debates or, or issues here, but I just, I, I guess maybe I, I hope that we can appreciate, we can appreciate the, the struggle in the Philippines with bong bong Marcos, right? Because People cannot see the sun except through the lens of the father. <laughs> whether you're for or against, whether you're for or against, I I want I, I, I don't want to I don't want to go into those political debates because th that's not the point. The the illustration is just that's why the the feelings are so strong, maybe on either side, or you can appreciate because the son is like the father, so that's why the feelings are so malakas. They're so malakas. They're so strong. Okay. And it's even to a stronger extent in the Old Testament and in the, in the first century. And it's even to a stronger extent when you're dealing with kings. We're just dealing with presidents right now, elected officials. Can you imagine monarchies? Next level. If you've seen the son, you've seen the father. The son carries out the father's wishes. And so Paul there is incredible assurance in this truth. And the, the accent on the only son is because in, in John 1, 12 to 13, right? We are all called sons of God. <laughs> so let's come back here. So if we can come back here to, to John 1, 12. But all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God so powerful and yet there is no comparison between us and jesus christ and so here we're accented this is not the revealing of the sons <laughs> the family of god this is the revealing of the only the one of a kind the unique son of god the second person of the trinity accent is that does that does that make sense paul is that making sense uh, yeah yes okay. slowly when you okay. I uh, have this illustration like Bong Bong and the, his father. <laughs> we're, we're, getting we're, we're getting contextual now, baby. We're getting contextual now. Oh, my goodness. Uh, 
So, okay, let's go on here. Let's go on here. Let's go on here. Again, I, I want to stress, I, there's various sides to this. That, that's The purpose is not to have a political discussion. It's just to illustrate, and it should give us assurance. Where other, whatever side you fall on, that illustration should give us assurance for to next level type degree for, for the sun. So notice here. So we have eyewitnesses. This is the 12 here. Eyewitness testimony, 100%. <laughs> Come on, more eyewitness testimony. If ever there was, so Diba, Diba, you need, we could even, there's 12 here, but we would say this is one category of eyewitness testimony. In the law for something to be true, you need at least two witnesses. On the basis of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. That was the, the, the Old Testament law requirement, okay? So we have one category here, the 12, the, 12, the 12 apostles, disciples. You ready for this? Second. John bore witness. Again, this is eyewitness testimony. Come on. So there is an accent here on the second category, the, the Old Testament prophet, prophetic category. We have seen his glory, number one. Number two, John bore witness about him. And he cried out, this was he whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me. So if we understand and recognize, and all, everyone in Jesus' day accepted John as they accepted John as the uh, the prophet Elijah. John was the the final OT prophet. He's John is already fulfilling eschatology. Right? And we can see this in Isaiah 40 verse 3. John is the, the voice crying in the wilderness, right? So already we're looking at fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, okay? But this is insane. So of all the prophets that have come before, John is like the climax. John is the climax, okay? And look at this here, baby. The one coming after me ranks before me. Jesus is better than me. <laughs> And then look at this. So even though Jesus, Jesus comes, Jesus is the one who comes after. He is before in preeminence. In time. In position. So this should call everyone. This testimony along should call all to believe. Jesus is the one to come. Jesus is the coming one. And then we have, lastly here, we have ex explanation. This is, this, is going to be, this is going to be the explanation. So this here is an explanation, okay? So you could have, you could have the, the testimony. You can have the, the coming. So if I'm, if I'm preaching this, okay, I'm preaching. One, two, three, come on, right there, three points, boom, boom, boom. The coming of the word. Or, or, you, could, or you could connect it here. You could connect the testimony here. So you have the coming and then um, here, or, or you can connect it there. I mean, there's, there's different ways. I, I, would, I would like to, to keep... It, I would like to split I would like to split it here if I was preaching this because of the connection because of this here the glory aspect I would want to keep this the coming of the word to dwell among men you could have three points so this is come on look at this this is so easy a B C right <laughs> one. A, this is John bore, uh, John bore witness. This is the, 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 the test, the, the witness. 
the witness, his position, right? And then C, content of message. Come on, look at that. Beautiful. That'll preach. And then we have the explanation. Okay, we got the explanation here, okay? From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. <laughs> so, so look at this. Look at this. So this is the source. This is the object. This is the action. Okay. So, so look at this here and then look at this. So no, this is going to get crazy here. Okay. You just hang with type. Me. If you have to leave, feel free to leave. I'm going to post this. I'm going to do every possible. We're getting at least one video posted a week. If it takes a little bit of time to delay, but think, look at this here. So we have, we have two graces here. Okay. We have two graces here and, and everyone connects these two. Okay. So we have uh, grace one, the law, and we have grace two. We have, so we have two here. Okay. But notice here, look here. Okay. So you can see dissimilarity. So there's dissimilarity. This is going to get to um, those of you who are struggling with covenant theology and dispensational and new covenant. Th this thing is big here. Okay. Y you know, uh, maybe I'll get all converts. Okay. Maybe you won't be convinced, but so notice here. So there's grace upon grace, or some, some translations will have grace. Uh, we'll have grace for grace, grace in place of grace. But there, so there's similarities and dissimilarities. So there's similarities and dissimilarities, okay? So look here. Um, uh, and, and so here we have a, a, a explanation. So this builds from here. And so number one thing I want to say is that the, for, okay, so we're, we're looking at this. Maybe I'm all over the place. Watch the video again. I'm just going to highlight stuff. I don't want to forget everything. So number one, if we recognize grace, and so, so there's two graces here, okay? at least two graces, um, grace upon grace. Okay, so, we, so looking fairly in the context, the law, law is grace. Okay, very fair. Okay, Jesus Christ is bringing grace and truth. Okay. So there is a there is a contrast here for sure. There's a there's there is a contrast going going on here, okay? Now look at this. We have all received. So the we is clearly at this point referring to I would say at least church especially picking up with the all church apostles and then considering the law this has to be also include Israel and Gentiles, okay? And this is, of course, the, the condition is all, the, the condition is all on faith. Does everyone see how the, the we has to be all of it? Because it's including the law, it's including grace and truth that Jesus is bringing, right? Everyone sees this. We're all, we're all here, okay? You got it? Everyone's, everyone's good so far? Okay, so the law is given through Moses. So Moses is the, the mediator and Jesus is also a mediator. So if we recognize the mediation, it's there. So explicitly, this is agent. Okay. Agent, agency, agent. All right. So, so clearly here, Moses is the mediator of the old Testament, old covenant. Moses is the mediator. Okay. I think everyone has to agree with that. Okay. And then, but if we recognize that Jesus is doing mediation here, then we have to see new covenant, right? Present. Uh, the, the, the implication is the presence of the new covenant. Okay. But notice this here. <laughs> we can suffer. So there's, there's clearly dissimilarity between the two right the, the law was given grace and truth came okay and grace and truth must be uh eternal right grace and truth is eternal right 
everyone's tracking so far. Is everyone tracking? Everyone's seeing this picture being built. Okay. So we're building theology and I hope and see that you see this as clear. So, so, so we're getting there. Okay. So there's dissimilarity. There's dissimilarity between these two. Okay. But you can't say radical dissimilarity because they're defined fundamentally as grace. <laughs> right. You can't, they're both grace. Okay. And more importantly, Grace and truth is eternal. You couldn't sit there and say grace just shows up when Christ comes, right? You can't say that, especially since we've all received. <laughs> so there must be something going on that's bigger, that's similar and dissimilar. And so that's why we talk about, and this is not the only place, and you'd have to look at other places, but you can see this clearly. You can see that there's a greater theme going on, the covenant of grace. So we'll talk about two administrations, Moses, Christ, but Christ doesn't just show up on the scene as if it's just there. We've already seen how many times the promise of Abraham is fulfilled in Christ. The promise of David is fulfilled in Christ. The law is fulfilled in Christ right? He, he becomes a curse for us. The promise of Eve is in Christ. And so there must be this broader idea of continuity because look here, everyone is receiving grace and grace is only coming through Christ. Does everyone see that? So there is this similarity, old covenant, new covenant, but it's all one. It's all one. Do I have you convinced? <laughs> and so to look at this and see radical discontinuity is terrible. We need to see this in promise fulfillment categories. Type, anti-type. We're just saying climax, climax, type climax categories. And look at this here. The law was given through Moses, right? So, so looking here, the source of all of these things, look at this here. The ultimate actor is God, the father. God through Moses gives the law. God through Christ gives grace and truth. And grace and truth is even there before the law. <laughs> one, one actor, one actor. So what are your questions? Or maybe this makes sense. Let's take a pause. What are your questions or comments? Maybe the, the reason of this uh, grace upon grace because in Moses, there's no salvation, but in Christ, there's a redemption. No, we have no, there's that's what I'm trying to say. You can't say that, Paul. The okay, grace okay. in place of grace means that salvation is with Moses as well. It's all the same. So, so think about this. So, so let's think about this. So, so one position will say, let's draw this out here. Okay. So, I love mathematical diagrams just because it's helpful. Okay. So, if you're thinking positive and negative, right? This is a, a graft. What many people will say, law, bad, grace, Christ, good. And I'm saying that is, that is, let me draw this down here as strong as I can. This is a, this is incorrect. What it should be here. You ready for this? Let's draw this again. Negative, positive, law, good, Christ, better, all in the realm of grace. Do you see that? Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> but because there is such, if so, here's the thing if you're just looking at these two things, you could maybe see, oh, this is positive and negative. There's that tendency. 
But when you look at the full picture, you can't have that. You have to remove this. It's all in relationship to what? Do you see what I'm saying? Is everyone tracking there with me? If we're just looking at, at these two relationships, yeah, there's a, there's a negative slope. <laughs> there's a negative, for those of you who know math, there's a negative slope there, right? Because you're just looking at these two as a contrast. But the big picture, the big picture is that it's all positive. It's all redemption. And then this fits perfectly. This, fit, this fits perfectly when you have a, a passage like Hebrews. Now, the faith is the assurance of things hopeful, hope for the conviction of things seen. For by it, <laughs> the people of old received their commendation. <laughs> they didn't receive their commendation by works. That, that would be this paradigm. They received it by faith. By faith, we understand the universe was created by the word of God. By faith, Abel offered a more acceptable offering than Cain. Faith is there from the beginning, my brothers. And as soon as we're talking about faith, as soon as we're talking about faith, we're talking about Christ. <laughs> and we're talking about Christ. We're talking about the covenant of grace. The system by which God saves all people of all generations of all time. Okay? Sir Tim. Yeah, question. go ahead. Uh, grace upon grace. Um, it, is, it is correct to say that grace is, uh, there's a progression of grace. I mean, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So from a historic redemptive perspective, absolutely. There's, there's a, Deba, because there was, there was more revelation given. So Abraham did not understand all of the, the intricacies of redemption, right? So even Jesus will say that John the Baptist is greater than everyone else, all the other prophets, but the least in the kingdom is greater than he. So there is this movement in redemptive and rev revelation history, okay? But we can't say it's a different kind. We're not speaking of quality, but quantity. Do you see the substance is there just like, so the, the big analogy is just like the flower, the flower seed and the flower, right? The seed contains fundamentally everything that the flower will become, but we don't yet see it. So I think this is just the best illustration to describe grace upon grace. I just, one of one a very good one a very good one yeah excellent question thank you Pastor. you're welcome any other questions or comments or i hope this is making sense oh yeah go ahead Pastor team yeah go yeah. ahead Jesus. um the the grace that you're referring about moses is that you you mean the grace in works is that the same uh, the way the, the law the law is just refers to the grace of works yeah because in romans 11 it said uh, 11 i think verse 6 if i remember yeah. it is by grace it is uh, if, if it is by grace it is no longer on the basis of works otherwise yeah. grace is no longer grace yeah yeah so that, so yeah, yeah so, okay. so 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 there's a works aspect in the law but mm -hmm. fundamentally, you approach the law by faith. There's sacrifice in the law, and everything anticipates the coming of Christ. But those that were under the law had to be saved by grace. So, so, so look here. So look here. For being so, yeah, yeah. It's higher, yeah. You said this a kind of Jesus grace that you mentioned is, uh, yeah. You said uh, the illustration that you show it. Uh, Christ is better. Than yeah. the 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 law, right? So yeah. my my point here uh, is that the law here is not being enforced. It's not being enforced. Oh, it's still by grace. Oh, st I I I don't know. Uh, it's not, it's, the law is being enforced here, right? Let's put the the Ten Commandments is being enforced. Is that yeah, still by grace or, or not? Yeah. So 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 remember, the law is always in force. The the grace part yeah. of the law. So so just to be clear. Only giving the law, Paul talks about this in Romans 7, only giving the law, 
within the law, there is no ability to do the law. And there is no atonement to cover the sins when you break the law. Mm -hmm. Is everyone tracking there? You're tracking there with me, right? So the law is always the law. The eternal law of God is there from the beginning until the end of time. Love God and love others. Everything else is commentary and context. Okay. So uh, played out. And and the the, the idea is enforced, right? It it should be enforced. It's always enforced. So the the amazing, yeah. But that enforcing, but that enforcing, is that grace or, or not? No. So the enforcing of the law, that's law. That's justice. Grace is unmerited favor. Mercy is okay. not getting the penalty of the law. So, so if you can think of it this way, Christ, it, Christ atoned for our breaking of the law so that now we can still do it, but we're covered by his grace. Mm-hmm. We're covered by his mercy. So let's, I mean, let's write some stuff down so, here. So okay. the, the grace by works here is out of, con- out, out. In that in this context, in this line of uh, understanding, yeah. So so no, but uh, so so the law was a gracious thing. God sharing with us mm-hmm. what is what is what He commands of us. That's a gracious thing. Okay, right. But it does. But mm-hmm. but it's not sufficient to save. It doesn't okay. give us the power. It doesn't give us the power to over to do. All it does is says this is what God commands of you. You, you know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, so the law is gracious, but that's why what I'm trying to get at here is that if you're only seeing the law without the deeper grace behind and the work of Christ in old Testament saints. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that's why you have to understand the, 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 the covenant the of grace of being Christ. in effect. It's still in effect during this time period. Okay. That is because because of the faith because of the faith presence the faith yeah yeah do you see what I'm saying so 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 people will talk about there's there's a works principle in the law and then there's also there's also grace behind the scenes and and again I would just come back to this there is this old covenant administration this new covenant but the way that everybody is saved whether in here or here is through the work of Christ. Is that making sense, Jesus, or you're still struggling a little bit? Yeah, I'm okay. So now I'm looking with the context of a covenant of grace. So yeah. in the old Testament, so uh, the old Testament is kind of enforce grace, but here in the new covenant, it's kind of uh, it's, uh, voluntary. Is that uh, for those who only will accept Jesus? Could, could we say that, sir? No, because I mean, because we still, it's not voluntary. We're still commanded. We have to, we have to keep the law. It's just when we, whether Old or New Testament, when we fail, we have Christ's atonement to cover us. Yeah. So, so, so here's one okay, thing sir. to think about. So here's one thing to think about. This is why I'm saying type. So much of the Old Testament was a type. So much of the old law was a type pointing towards the fulfillment. So we have to, we have to think about the old, mm-hmm. the old covenant just not in in the command of god but also that it's pointing it's pointing to it's pointing to the new covenant that's the only thing that's eternal so so just to be clear jesus and this is why maybe one day we'll have a book study in hebrews the 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 author of hebrews says which i believe is paul says that the shedding of of the blood of bulls can never atone for sins never Mm-hmm. So there is no way in the old covenant, if you just approached it at the let the written letter of the law, you could never receive salvation. But it was never intended to be like that mm-hmm. because it was fundamentally a type and it was pointing towards a greater reality. Mm-hmm. Someone in the Old Testament, Abraham, Moses, Joshua, they approached the law by faith, recognizing that there was going to come an eternal sacrifice to which that sacrifice pointed to that would actually cover their sins. That's the extent to which they trusted. Do you see what I'm saying? So so if all you did was approach the law by, I got to have this blood and sacrifice. That's why Jesus is like, I'm tired. That's why the Lord's like, I'm tired of your sacrifices. It means nothing if there's nothing in the heart. They were just approaching it as if it was just, well, let's just do these works 
Let's just do these outward signs and we're good to go. That's what the Catholic Church does. Do these sacraments and you're good to go. And they're not dealing yeah. with the heart. And the so heart. what? Yeah. And so the, here, the heart, the faith, it's always been there. Grace upon grace. It's always been there. It's how we've approached. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that making sense? Yeah, sure. This is so deep. Yeah, yeah, sure. it's, like, Thank it's, you like so awesome. it's like a razor blade, Jesus. And we have to have we have to have multiple metaphors, multiple images, multiple understandings kept in mind as we approach these truths. Th we are we are so deep right now. Okay, we're so deep. And I would yeah. not say that we would yeah. for, for even for even for, for everyone, this is not for everyone, but but the importance here is understanding that salvation has always been by faith through grace. Always. Grace. Always. And we Thank have you, here, yeah, you're welcome. We have here from Christ's fullness, we, Israelite, Gentile of all ages, apostles, prophets, church, we have all received grace upon grace. For God gave his law through Moses. God has given grace and truth through Jesus Christ. And that existed from the garden. And then here's the concluding statement here. No one has ever seen God, not even Moses. Declaration here. And we're ending here. Declaration. No one has ever seen God. No one. The only son. Description. Description. Location. The only son at the father's side. Some use bosom. Bosom. Intimate relationship. He. This one. Emphasis. He has made God the Father known, revelation. I guess you could, you could have, no, this is an explanation here. This is, this is the, the big conclusion. Because throughout John, he's going to be fighting with the Pharisees. He's John is going to be fight. He, Jesus is going to be fighting with the Pharisees the whole time. And they're, 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 they're looking at their interpretation. And he's like, no, M Moses is, he, Moses pointed to me, right? Moses pointed to me. Moses anticipated me. Read your scriptures. You think you have eternal life. And they testified about me. This, this answers so many issues throughout John's gospel. Reread John's gospel in light of this. In light of this. It's going to open your eyes to why he fought so much with them. They were like, oh man, you know, you know, we got this. Scriptures are on us. And Jesus is like, no, scriptures are on my side. And you're, you're, of, you're of Satan, the devil, right? My goodness. This is, this is so fundamental. So the, the last thing that we could even say here and this is impl implicit. The law also testifies later in John's gospel. We're going to see this testifies to the son. So there is no excuse. The reliability is sure. And so here we have the great chain. We have the great chain. So look at this here. I'm going to do the great chain. And we close on this, right? So God is in heaven. Father, Since. son, Since. no one has come up to see God. The only son has come down and reveals him. Okay, watch this. So, so this, this is our, this is our, this is our lifeline. If it's not true, it's worthless. The whole message is the, the whole message is corrupted, right? We need assurance here. And so what what confirms this? Apostles, apostles witness. What else confirms this? John John's testimony. What else confirms this? So we're we're his own testimony. 
It's the statement of Jesus. So actually, Jesus says, I will not testify. Jesus, Jesus actually does not testify because he's the one giving the message. So someone else has to testify. Now, Je Jesus is testifying to the truth that's here, but Jesus is not testifying about his own testimony. <laughs> Do you see what I'm no, saying? The, fa the father. Yeah, no, that's correct. So we have, so no, that's really good, Danny. So we have apostle witness, John's witness. We have the law, the law's witness. And then we also have, God the Father. So we have this is my son. One, two. Yeah, this is my son. Three, four witnesses to the message. And this whole question on reliability. Is it reliable? Yes. It is reliable. In the presence of two or three witnesses. Yeah. So here, let's come back to Let's come back to the big idea. And we'll, we'll close here. Big idea. The, the eternal word has become a man in order to bring God's presence to us fully, revealing the Father to us, his person and will, becoming a man, revealing God to us, his acts, his words, his power. The son is far greater than Moses. Now, in this context, it's just these three. But for sure, we could include God the Father. Jesus' disciples, John the final OT prophet, and the law testify and confirm the son to us. And he reveals God's person and message to all of us. Big idea. This is Christology, session eight, the revealed, the living word, God's revealed word to us. Um, let's close in prayer. And if you want to stay in chat or have, have follow-up questions, we can do it. Um, let's, let's close. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pray and also grant each one of us. I'm, I'm not grant. I'm going to pray the blessing of, of, of God upon each one of us. And I really want us to just cherish and meditate these truths. I hope and trust that you'll preach this message. You don't have to follow what I'm like, like just preach the content. You can create your own outline. Maybe you want to do something different. That's, that's, that's fine. But our, our members need to hear the assurance and the, the fulfillment of what has already been done for them. And Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight, and I just um, I ask for your guidance, for your spirit to be with each one of us. Father God, I pray for those in the Philippines. Some people, I shouldn't say it, many people are rejoicing, and for sure people are afraid. And um, we don't know, we each act in accordance with what you've called us to, to do, what we believe that you've called us to do, Father God. And so I, I pray that we would have confidence in the future. I pray that you would guide and strengthen each one here. Father God, putting aside all politics and um, um, so much confusion going on, Father God, I pray that we would rest in the deeper truth that Christ is the living word. He has come to dwell among us. And although he is in heaven right now, reigning from your right, from your right side over all things. He has sent his spirit. Your spirit is in, is, is among us, is in us. Uh, we are your temple. We are your tabernacle. And Father God, we know that Christ's presence is here even tonight. And so Father God, I, I just ask a blessing upon each one here tonight. May you bless them and may you keep them. May the Lord make, uh, May you make your face to shine upon them and to be gracious to them. May you lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen.